here's $20,000. Let's start an Amazon business together. And that's what Clout Fitness kind of was born out of. And uh, last year, I think we did like 2.2 million or 2.4 million. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but that was just on Amazon. Hey guys, Dan Nikas here. I'm the founder of Gearbunch.com. Hey, this is Paul Johnson with Masky. This is Josh Krause of IceHomeArcadeGames.com. And you're listening to you and you're listening. And you're listening to the Econ Show. Show. Welcome to the Ecom Show, presented by Blue Tusker, the number one place to hear the inside scoop from other e-commerce experts where they share their secrets on how they scaled their business and are now living the dream. Now, here is your host, Andrew Math. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ecom Show. I am your host, Andrew Math, and today I am joined by Paul Johnson, who is the co-founder of Clout Fitness as well as MassView, which we'll get into. But Paul, you ready to have a good show? Yeah. What's up? Yes. Let's do this. This was gonna be fun. I could already tell from your energy this morning. It's it's great. This is gonna be a good one. Uh, so, Paul, let's do the stereotypical approach that we always end up doing on every show, where we pretend that no one knows who you are, and then you kind of go through your whole song and dance of what Clout and Fitness is and what MassView is, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, buddy? Yeah, sure. So do you want me to just give you the my background then or what? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, Clout Fitness is a fitness brand. It's a private, it was a private label brand on Amazon, primarily doing uh, weightlifting kind of accessories. Really like one major skew is like our barbell clip. Uh, it's like a, it's like a weight clip that you put on. Um, and then we also have distribution. Last year, we got distribution in Walmart as well. Uh, we were on the Inc. 5000. I can't remember what uh, number it was right <laughs> One now. Of them. <laughs> we were on there uh, for, uh, for that business. And I mean, we started off, founded it, uh, kind of just looked at the data and it was a good product to sell. I don't really have a huge weightlifting background or anything. It was just like, it looked like a good product. Uh, we decided to be the value player in the space. And uh, so we went for kind of just trying to get our supply chain as cheap as possible mm -hmm. in China. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been through all kinds of crazy uh, journeys since then. It's been fun. It's kind of a, it's kind of like a, been always a side project of mine actually and it yeah. kind of blew up uh in the last couple of years so it was exciting nice so how did you get into like the whole amazon space and then particularly this category yeah so this is a this could go we could do the whole podcast just on this but um <laughs> but yeah so before i did amazon i my first e-commerce business was uh was ebay actually and we were selling guitars actually on eBay and we bought, I worked at a music shop and I decided I wanted to do something online. I watched like a CNN special and there was all these people making money online and I was like, I can do this. And so I Googled like buy wholesale guitars. And like the first thing that showed up was this company that sells, uh, refurbished guitars from the major manufacturer. So they buy like mm -hmm. all the big brands and they fix them. So anyway, we, we did that. Uh, that kind of played out, ended up going to the postal auction in Atlanta, Georgia. That's kind of where I'm from in the Georgia area. And all of the lost mail shows up at the postal auction every month. And you can buy like these, you know, you can buy a million dollars worth of stuff that was recently shipped and lost. And so we bought, uh, we started buying like pallets and then eventually like tractor trailer loads of, of merchandise and selling it. And around this time, we ended up, my business partner at the time, he started buying a bunch of books and we started doing a lot with Amazon. And this was back when, you know, it was still cool to sell books on Amazon. And so <laughs> we, we, we started, we had, we started and it was in my garage. And then I bought a house with the, or rented a house with a basement. And then we got a 4,000 square foot warehouse. Then we got a 17,000 square foot warehouse. And we had all these employees processing all this stuff. And then we realized there was this thing called FBA. And we were like, Oh my gosh, like they'll ship it for us. This is cool. And so, you know, we had, I don't know if this is exaggerating or not, but I think at one point in time we had like a hundred thousand different SKUs 
or something wow. like that. And, um, you know, cause it was all just one-offs of all these random books and gizmos and gadgets and everything. And, uh, and so my, my business partner, his brother bought a private label kind of brand. Like it was their own brand. And it was, it's actually a, a company called bear Paws. They sell these like meat forks. They'll make you look like Wolverine. And he bought <laughs> them, like, a barbecue brand. And I, I don't remember exactly, but I think like, it was like Q4 and they did like $80,000 in sales in one month or something. And it was like one skew. I don't remember. Maybe it was 80,000 in a couple of days. I don't know. But it was like, I remember the number 80,000 and they sh- he showed me like inside their Amazon account. And I was like, wait, you can sell like one product and make all this <laughs> money. Like this is amazing. Right. And so we, uh, that was when I was like, okay, it's time to change the, the business model. Instead of trying to sell a hundred thousand SKUs once, I'm going to try to sell one SKU a hundred thousand times yeah. and, and, and kind of switch over to that. And, um, so we kind of started like closing down the warehouse and, and, uh, we ended up kind of starting to do software, uh, as well. And we started building software to really help these Amazon sellers. And it's funny because clout fitness was actually a side project of, it was a case study for our software we were like oh okay like we need to like for, we called it the ten thousand dollar the twenty thousand dollar challenge i think is what it was so basically i gave i had a buddy of mine patrick muir and he was um work he had a you know he ended up coming to work for us but i was like here's twenty thousand dollars like let's start an amazon business together and that's what clout fitness kind of was born out of was this $20,000 investment. And uh, last year, I think we did like 2.2 million or 2.4 million. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but that was just on Amazon. Um, And, uh, and so we, we never really, we took like a little bit of money. We never put any more money in it. Besides that, we just started it with 20 grand. And then uh, we got a couple of Amazon lending loans whenever the account got big enough to do it. And, uh, and that was it. And we, we started that in start that 20, 2015, I think is when it was. Um, wow. and, uh, we just kind of just grew it as like a side project, just like this little kind of like fun business. Like, Hey, we want to experiment with, uh, selling random stuff. Let's see if this works. Let's try this. It was like always our experimental account because we were always doing weird stuff with Amazon and our other business. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of the story. <laughs> so what do you think it is that kind of helped you guys like surpass that seven figure mark? Um, well, a lot, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> so I would say, I would say <laughs> I'm not trying to like, I don't want to pitch my own stuff, but I mean, on Amazon specifically, like reviews are the thing that matter the most. And, um, and when we kind of first launched the business, uh, we, we, I guess there's a lot of things. So to be kind of fair, like, so one of the things is that when we first launched the business, we, I I own a company called snag shout, um, which is kind of tied to mass view. And when we first launched the business, we were able to, this was back before Amazon used to have this thing where you could give away a product for the coupon code and you could require somebody to write a review. You could be like, all right, I'm giving you this product, write a review. And so when we first launched the business, we were able to get a lot of, a, a good amount of reviews. We didn't get that many because it's expensive to give away product or whatever, but that was like a great way to launch uh, the, the, the business. But then, you know, sales were good, but we had a lot of patent litigation stuff and everything going on because there was another company. I'm not going to go, go into all of that. Um, but, uh, but there was uh, a lot of stuff that we were dealing with that. And once we were able to clear up all that and we started getting some of our own design patents and stuff like that, um, and then get our supply chain figured out and do all of those things, that's when we were able to really grow the business. Um, and then COVID last year was huge, right? Like every, it's a fitness company. Everyone's at home. 
uh, working, working out from home and everything. And then a lot of our competitors had self supply chain issues. And so with Amazon, like once you get that momentum, it's really good to, it's easier to hold it. And then your reviews go crazy because like right now on Amazon, you know, they have this rating system, right? So they used to do like, you had to write a full review to leave a review, but now you can just click a star button and it'll give it, it'll, it'll, it'll bump your count up. And so because of that, um, if you have sales velocity, it's really easy to keep the review count going up a yeah. lot on Amazon. So and that's since, since you can't obviously do, you know, the whole free product for a review. And I know there's yeah. a lot of other like kind of backdoor stuff of people doing like, you know, off Amazon style rebates and things like that. I yeah. know, you know, there's some of that, but what's your tactic of being able to get, you know, start to generate all those reviews? Yeah, is it so just sales velocity or do you have... No, like I mean, that's what trip? Matthew is, right? So like Matthew's like, that's kind of our our thing. So we do... we So Snackshout, we do rebates on Snackshout now. So we pivoted, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of Amazon shoppers on there, but we don't require review. It's just cash back, you know, and everything. And Amazon's really sophisticated now. Like they... So it used to be like the Chinese, what they would do is they would do this thing called brushing basically and um i don't really know where that name comes from it's like a weird chinese <laughs> translation or something but basically it's it's where they would like get a credit card create a fake amazon account like buy enough products to get to the threshold of where you could write a review buy their own product ship like a piece of a paper clip or something to get a tracking number to some random person's house and then um review their own product and write a five star review, maybe leave a negative review for their competitor or whatever. Right. And Amazon has built a pretty sophisticated machine learning kind of AI that goes through and analyzes all the accounts. And one of the things that they do is they look at like the, the, the shopping patterns and what other products they buy. And they build this kind of web of stuff to be able to detect, like if you have a hundred bots and they're all buying like the same products and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And so that's something that's like, because of that, if you're ever using any type of deal platform, whether it's like uh, Snackshot, which is ours, or like somebody else's, there's always going to be the AI. You're always kind of fighting against the AI in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. Like the AI, even if it's like a totally legitimate sale and you only did, even if you just have your own list, right? Let's say you have your own list and you have a, a, ten, a thousand people on your list and you're like, hey, list, I'm going to give you. 50% uh, off to buy my product and hopefully you'll write a review, but I'm not going to require you to, right? That's totally a legitimate thing. If you do that enough and like the same people are always buying your product, like some of their reviews are going to get deleted and things like that. And so, and so it's just not the same anymore, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But definitely if you're like on Facebook or if you're using a lot of these other platforms that are out there that don't really guard like who gets the, f the free or the cheap product, it's really almost impossible to get reviews like those people like they can't even leave reviews on yeah. Amazon anymore like their accounts are just banned or whatever so we did something pretty painful actually which was we like introduced like all these limits and we did like uh phone number verifications like every time you log in and we're rolling out um like bank level ID verification and everything so like get rid of all the riffraff and like mm -hmm. basically like make real like not just because there's all these people on these deal websites so they're just looking for free stuff. So even if you go run like a Facebook ad and you're like you're using like a mani chat workflow and you're doing all this uh, Facebook bot stuff, you're going to get uh, a bunch of the AI in Facebook. Like when you tune the ads, it will find the people that are like just going around grabbing all the deals. And yeah. stuff like that. And so you have to advertise differently. So my, my strategy, long story short, is to get real people to buy your product and try to have a way to communicate with them outside of the Amazon channel, mm -hmm. basically, to where you can ask them to write reviews and you can be a little bit more aggressive at it without, you know, downright breaking FTC regulations yeah. and being like, hey, I'm going to give you 20 bucks if you write a review. What do you what do you tell 
Amazon sellers regarding Snagshot, like going that going that route, whether it's with Snagshot or whether it's you know with another rebate site. Like, you yeah. know, I know a lot of sellers. Every time we talk to them, doing anything that is remotely even close to against Amazon's terms of service, they're yeah. always like, "No, no, no, I don't want to do that," because so many Amazon sellers are so reliant on just Amazon and they haven't gone through the whole diversification process yet. So yeah. what do you usually tell them like to say like, Hey, you're not going to get suspended for doing this. Yeah. I mean, well, I say that like, number one is that like, I've heard of two or three complaints, like warnings from people that have brought it up to me in the last few years of like review manipulation or like whatever manipulation. Um, because uh, most of the time, you know, that's it. Like out of like thousands and thousands of sellers, like a couple of times. And that's a warning. That's like a warning from Amazon. That's not like you got suspended. That's like something yeah. weird happened. And every time I dig into it, they were always doing something weird, like beyond what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's their dang emails that were messing them up. They were putting stuff in their emails like, Hey, leave a, you know, please leave a five star review or something like that, where they were trying to like, you know, review gate or whatever yeah. kind of stuff. And so, I mean, I think that you're more likely just going to get reviews deleted than you are going to get your account suspended, I guess is yeah. my, is my thing. And then the other thing is like, if you don't have some strategy to like boost your sales off of Amazon, like you're not making it like yeah. it's, there's, Oh, we, could, no, we could definitely do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> there's no way you will be successful on Amazon if you don't pump it. I mean, maybe if you just, if you have like a huge social media following or something, but still that you're boosting your sales, right? You're sending traffic outside of Amazon to kind of do it. I mean, the algorithm is pretty simple. Like basically every single keyword has a certain number of searches, right? Mm-hmm. Amazon publishes some of this data in brain analytics, it shows you like what the rank of each keyword is, then you can kind of reverse engineer it. That's stuff that we do with MassView. We kind of come out and we figure out, you know, what, what the keyword is. And then you say, okay, well, this is how much searches it has. We know that they give you the click share, the conversion share, they give you like all the data right there that tells you like that they're tracking every single search on Amazon. And they're tracking who clicks on what product and who buys what product, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes it pretty dang easy to reverse engineer and figure out, okay, I need to get this many sales per day to rank on page one for this product. It's pretty easy to figure that out. That's kind of what all the data tools do. Us, Jungle Scout, Helium 10, whatever. That's what everyone does. So then you have to drive enough sales uh, while you're doing it. So I don't know how I got on that topic, but yeah, that's how you get <laughs> ranked number, you know, to page one is literally finding the keyword, driving the sales to do it. And, you know, while you're doing that, you might as well try to get some reviews in the process at, you know, at doing it. But, you know, all the other platforms out there, pretty much every single platform, Amazon has a good, line on who those shoppers are and they're just letting everyone go wild and everyone's buying the same stuff. And it's, it's just like, you're not getting a lot yeah. of reviews. So, I mean, but, but it's, I, like I said, I barely ever hear about, I just think they've solved it. They've solved the problem. Like it's just not easy to go and have a, a, a fake group of people to uh, review your product. Like once they buy, like we did yeah. this, like, some people like we all like I had a bunch of people like buy we all bought like the same products and then we all reviewed it and then all of a sudden like our stuff started getting you know deleted and everything and I was mm-hmm. like okay like you know this is it's fairly simple so so the best way to really grow your business is I mean everyone says this it's so stupid it, we've heard it a million times but it's like have a list have a list like you know <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing how many podcasts I've done. And every time someone's like, yeah, I don't understand why no one's got a list like that always blows my mind. Like, you know, we could definitely get into the whole diversifying away from Amazon. I'm not saying like stop selling on Amazon, but being so reliant on another business for your own business seems it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand half the time why Amazon sellers like stick to just Amazon and, and not move around. But 
So it's with this uh, Amazon, I call it the Amazon crack. It's the Amazon crack. Like, yeah. It's it's so good until it's not. Like until you're like, oh man, yeah. this is really bad. And like, no, I mean even us, like we we've been the software company. I mean, so my last company was Seller Labs. We actually founded uh, a snag shop in Seller Labs, and then I sold and spun it out of mm-hmm. there. And you know, I kind of got out of Seller Labs, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna diversify myself. Like I saw what happened. Like. <laughs> I saw what happened, you know, we had feedback genius, which was like the, the, you know, the tool that sends all the emails. We were freaking huge. And now like, I knew, I knew what was going to happen. I was like, Amazon's going to replace us with their own thing, or they're going to get rid of this because they don't want people spamming their customers. Right. And I was like, okay, I'm going to sell. I sold to my business partner. I spun out Snackshot. I was like, I'm going to go do this. And I, and I, and in my head, I was like, okay, I'm going to get off of Amazon and like expand beyond Amazon. Right. Well, Literally, like this week, we're finally opening up Smash View and Snackshot to work like off of Amazon for everything. Finally, like <laughs> it's been four years and it took me that long to like yeah. get over it because I just kept on finding all these cool problems and all this stuff with Amazon, even even now. But like, you know, like build an ad tool. Like we we started building an ad tool when I left. And uh it was cool. It was like the, one of the coolest ad tools around. Well, Amazon's, they're making billions of dollars running ads. So guess what they do? They steal every single uh, cool thing that you create like on their yeah. platform, you know? And, and it's the same thing if you're, a, if, you know, we have all this legislation coming on right now for like Amazon competing with you, like with their private label and mm-hmm. stuff like that, right? Like you make a product, you put it on Amazon, Amazon's going to... Um, is they're going to copy it if it if it does yeah, well like it does so well enough, you, yeah. you got, like it's their sandbox like yeah. you know understand it and yeah like I mean, it, it's it is always interesting to me like you know how we mentioned like these you know some of these sellers they don't diversify off they don't build a list it's also really interesting to me like the thing that always drives me crazy about the the businesses i find where they're solely on amazon is they spend so much time like trying to figure out these tiny little tweaks just to get like a little bit more revenue when in reality like hey if you went to Walmart or you opened your own site and you focused your energy there you'd be a lot happier <laughs> later on down the road it yeah. was really interesting so what what's your stance on the whole off Amazon get off like, Amazon uh do it <laughs> so <laughs> i think i think okay so here's the thing um this is so Brick and mortar distribution is amazing. Actually, everyone acts like it's crazy hard and it is expensive. You got to have money to do it, right? You have to be able to fund, you have to be able to have enough inventory for like someone like Walmart to buy, right? So we're in like 1,750 Walmart stores or whatever, like on the shelf. And, you know, even if you sell like a couple units a week, right, per store, you're talking about thousands of sales a week, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you can get in, but then you have to have the inventory to do it. And then they're not going to pay you for like 90 days. Right. So it's a big boy kind of play <laughs> that you have to do, but it's awesome. And you know, the thing about Walmart is like, there's no other competitor on the shelf next to yeah. us. Like it's us. Like yeah. we have it. And now someone can come in and they could, you know, take it away, which is why we've like really worked on our supply chain. Right. So we've worked on, you know, we don't just, we've developed new molds. We've gotten design patents. We've worked on, um, we've worked on, you know, we're working on potentially manufacturing in another country besides China, like to reduce the shipping cost and the, and the lead times and everything else. Right. But, Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, that's a great, I think that's the real way to do it because if you think about like, traffic um so i have another company that i partnered with uh it's uh, called designer daddy and the guy who the the front man for that his name's nephi garcia and he's a big instagram influencer right and he sells um we sell princess dresses and we're about to be like a wedding gown line he's like a fashion designer he has five hundred fifty thousand followers on instagram and like if you go work with somebody like him um, you don't need Amazon. You don't need yeah. uh, Walmart. Like, because that's all Amazon really is in Walmart. There's a distribution channel. They're just going to get eyeballs 
to your product, right? So for him, like yeah. we just launched a Kickstarter. We launched a, we launched a, um, we funded like the first, actually we went ahead and manufacture everything and launched a Kickstarter. Just why not? Um, and then we, you know, we put the product on Shopify. Whenever we want to make sales, we just put an Instagram post up and it's like, boom, you know, sales. Uh, and that's awesome. But like, if you're kind of bootstrapping a brand, like in my opinion, I don't know, maybe you got, maybe you have more experience. You talk to all the people about this, but in my opinion, uh, you should not try to do Shopify unless you're, unless you have a high ACV product or you have a, um, LTV that's high because traffic is so expensive on Facebook, um, on like a lot of these other things that Mm -hmm. you're going to spend so much money to acquire the customer that your ROAS is going to suck basically. Um, yeah, I've never been successful, like running paid traffic for, you know, $20 products or whatever, like one off things. You have to have some lifetime value of the customer to be able to, to get that out. So if you just have one SKU, like I think Amazon Walmart is like a good place to start. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually what I'll say is I, like you said, the, um, your new business that you're doing with designer daddy, like you, you already have the eyeballs, so you don't need to pay for them. Right. So it makes a lot of sense to start on something like a Shopify or anything like that. But if you're doing a product where, you know, maybe you're, not wildly differentiated. You're kind of okay with that, you know, race to the bottom sort of thing. And you don't already have the eyeballs available to you. Amazon's a great place to start because you can kind of get up and going relatively quick. You can put in a little bit of advertising dollars and see, you know, if your product, the concept of it works really well and you can make some money on it. And then in which case, then I say, okay, you know, diversify into other places. But I agree, like if you have like, one or two like $20 products, depending on what those products are, of course, like just launching a Shopify site and paying for ads is very expensive. Getting that traction going is not cheap. You usually are better, at least in the beginning, starting with some kind of influencer route. But if you can expand your product line, or if your product is like wildly differentiated where, you know, you can't really find anything else like this, then it's a little bit easier to kind of get, you know, some more traction that way. But otherwise, like, you know, some of these everyday products that people get and they're like, oh, you know, I bought a mug and I private labeled it and I put it up on Shopify. You're like, well, good luck with that because you're, yeah. you're going to well, be... Well, good luck with that on Amazon battle. too, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you think like if, if, it can ex- if it can succeed on Amazon, it can probably... It could probably succeed off Amazon, but you have to think through the way that Amazon's algorithm works is relatively similar to the way Google's work. So if you're doing a private label mug on Amazon, you're going to be spending an arm and a leg to try to even get to page one if you're lucky enough to do that. And it's the same problem if you did like Google shopping ads or something like that is you're going to be spending a ton of money just to get that thing going. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking more about like uh, Facebook than than Google shopping ads. So like I I really haven't done a ton with Google shopping ads, but like our Facebook row has... Like we were lucky if we could get like two or mm-hmm. whatever to Shopify on like a twenty dollar product. Yeah, uh, that's kind of new stuff. Whereas on Amazon on a twenty dollar product, we get like eight ROAS or whatever. So yeah, do you think like, the intent on Amazon is someone yes. actively searching for your product? Yes. On Facebook, it's like you're just presenting a solution to them that they may have the problem, but they may not be like ready to buy. So there's a lot more top funnel. So yeah, finding. Yeah. You know, it's, I agree. Like, it, for a product line like that, you got to have some kind of LTV behind it of repeat repeat buyers, or otherwise, it might not be the best route, or at least not doing Facebook ads. You might have to do a different approach to it. But you remember those uh, massage guns that were really popular like a year ago? Like, mm-hmm. the, like those things were like three hundred bucks, right? Yeah. And so, like, you can make that work. Like, if you have a product, mm-hmm. and you need to be differentiated, but if you have a three hundred dollar product, like, you can make that work on Facebook. Like that will work like all the time, but the $20 product, like it's just, it's just doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I don't know. Like I think, I think if you have like, I don't know, I'm looking here, some, some nuts or whatever, right? Like if you're selling nuts and you get people to come in on your brand and they're going to let, you know, you sell them the first product for a good price, then you can, then you can, you know, bring them in. And then if they love it and they reorder, 
now you got this LTV, right? And then you sell them some other stuff and everything. But I think that's the Shopify game is like, how do I actually acquire a customer? So we do the same thing for Snagshot, right? We're like, we're running ads being like, hey, we're going to give you free stuff. Like good deals. But like, you know, we might lose money the first time someone buys something on our site or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then over the lifetime, right? If we get them coming back and coming back and coming back, you know, we make money, make money, make money, right? And so, I mean, I know that it costs, you know, I know how much it costs to get something for somebody for free, you know, or for really cheap. Like it still yeah. costs money to give away a product like mm-hmm. that to get somebody to like go and buy it and then give them cash back or a coupon yeah. code. Like, so it's very expensive to run ads when you're trying to get somebody to buy, you know, to give you something, something, uh, money. And so I, that's why, that's why Amazon, I feel like that's why mm-hmm. Walmart, that's why the marketplace, because there, you don't have to overcome some trust issue. You don't have to have, you know, all the social proof, even if like for me, even if a product has like two reviews on Amazon, I'm like, I don't care. I'll just return it. Like if it yeah. sucks, like I don't care. Like, Whereas, you know, if you're on some random website that you've never seen before, even if it's beautiful, you're going to be less likely to buy. So anyway, that's kind of... Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's why sometimes we'll even tell sellers, like, you know, depending on your product, like that, you know, like you said, like it kind of comes down to like, you got to know exactly who your customer is. You got to know exactly like where they're most likely to purchase your product and when and things like that. And that's why it always depends. Like sometimes we'll tell sellers, depending on their product line, like, you might want to actually have on your Shopify site, like underneath your buy now button, like an available on Amazon button that just takes them straight to the listing. Yep. Cause like you said, it's almost impossible until you've gotten a big enough brand that you can like kind of have that awareness and trust that, you know, people working with you in the beginning, people are going to be so much more comfortable shopping on Amazon. They know they can get it in two days. They know they can return it without an issue. They know that they can complain to someone besides you if it doesn't yep. go as well. So it's, you know, it, to, to fight that is almost unnecessary. So that's why even sometimes we'll be like, screw it, let them go to Amazon. And, you know, if, as long as you're getting the sale, you're getting the sale. So, you know. Well, here's a cool thing that you can do. On your button, you can actually put in the keyword you want to target. You can do all kinds of cool stuff where you draw them in the search results page. Mm-hmm. And then that like counts, you know, it, it tips the algorithm is what I call it. Yeah. Right? And it's, so, you know, We've seen people do that because I know that's kind of the same way that you would do it through like a chat bot or something, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And that's what we do on Snapchat as well. Like whenever we send traffic to Amazon, we're we're pushing them towards a specific thing. So if you are sending somebody to, to from Shopify or whatever platform to Amazon, then go ahead and make sure that you take a keyword that you want to try to rank for and use that as the as the traffic, right? And so then yeah. you can get ranked. Now if you have no reviews. It's so funny. Like people are like, they come to us and they're like, Hey, can you get us ranked? And I'm like, yep, we get you ranked. Any keyword you want it. You got enough budget. We'll get you ranked. <laughs> and, and then, I, and then I'm like, I was like, but I never, I, but I don't recommend it. Cause what I tell everybody, I'm like, before we rank you. And so we have like a managed services team that sometimes we would take on a few customers, like a couple of months or whatever. And uh, I'm like, before we rank you, we have to, I, I strongly implore you to run ads to see if your product even converts for the keyword. And so, so many times we'll get people ranking like, you know, number one for a keyword. And then they're like, I'm not making any sales. And I'm like, yeah, because you got two reviews and you're up against all these products that have 5,000 reviews or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, the moral of the story is, uh, yeah, if you're sending traffic to Amazon, I do recommend targeting a keyword for what you want to rank for. But I also recommend before you pick that keyword, actually run sponsored product ads, see what your ROAS is, see if you're actually converting for it before you ever try to run a rank. That's a very good point. So. <laughs> that, is a, that is a very good point. I know, I know some sellers too, or they'll, you know, you can do it that way where you send them to the search results page, but now Amazon's even encouraging people to drive off Amazon traffic. So now you can use the affiliate link, in which yes. case you kind of have to pick your poison on what you want to do. Um, but that is, that is very interesting. I never, I, I don't know if I ever thought about that of like, Hey, yeah, we could rank you, but do you, do you really want that? Cause you, you might really not want be to be ranked like, for this keyword. I mean, that's what like, yeah. we do that. That's kind of like our main like bread and butter as far as Amazon goes is like helping people yeah. get ranked. Like that's what our whole tool set up to do. And like a lot of people they'll do it, they'll run everything and then they get ranked. And then it's like, you know, you'll, 
it takes a while. It's expensive to get ranked now because you have to like run enough traffic for a certain amount of time. And so you get ranked, you know, you run traffic for like three weeks or something to get ranked. And then you get up there and you might hold it for three weeks. But if you don't make the sales, you're going to fall back down, right? Yeah. So you have to actually get the click through and the purchase. And so you spend all this money and time trying to get ranked. And then mm-hmm. you get there and it's like, yeah, I did it. Number one for water bottle, which would cost <laughs> like millions of dollars to do. But, you know, you did it. And then it's like, <laughs> just like, like back down, you know, you got the best seller badge and everything, you know, nice. and it's yeah. like, and it's like, doesn't matter. Like if the guy next to you has 10,000 reviews and you have five, you see it all the time. You go to Amazon, you see these like random products and you're like, why is this number yeah, one exactly. or whatever? And it's like, you didn't have any business trying to get there for mm-hmm. that keyword or whatever. So yeah. anyway, that's so your, I imagine your answer to this will be relatively similar to mine, which is, it depends, but what is your like product launch strategy? How do you like, you get a new product and, you know, you get some, maybe you're working through mass for your snack shout, like, or your own product. Like what's your go-to on getting that thing up and running and starting that snowball effect. Yeah. So I'm for Amazon specifically, like what we like to do. Um, first thing we do before we ever even like launch a product, we do product inserts in the product. So we have a tool that does that, um, where there's like a QR code, people can scan it. It has like a unique, uh, a unique uh, code for each unit. So that way mm-hmm. they can like get cash back or get a reward. That's going to help you get reviews uh, for your organic sales, especially. So I highly recommend that if you're doing Amazon, some type of product insert. Um, I like to do a market. I do a huge market analysis. Like I look at like all of the keywords. I look at every single, um, every single uh, competitor, I pull every single keyword from every single one. I see like, what's the traffic. And then I try to determine like, what, what am I going to go for? Like, what, what, what do I think will be the best keyword? And then um, to get your first five to 10 reviews, if you're brand registered, you can do a vine, you can do Amazon vine, which Mm -hmm. is like, uh, you can actually, you can give away like 30 products. And it's funny, Amazon doesn't like let everybody else do it, but they still let you do, they let you do it. Right. So with buying, you can give away the products for free and then you can get up to like 30 (laughs) reviews. Um, So that's pretty good. They used to do the early reviewer program, but they don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, uh, and then I'll run ads. I just run ads to see what, um, what keywords are actually converting. And then once I know what ads are converting, then we'll run, um, we'll run uh, ranking campaigns. That's when we do the off Amazon traffic, right? And you can do traffic anyway. Like you can do Snapchat, you can do Facebook, you can do Google, you can do, um, you can do influencers. And then whatever it is that you want to do, your own email list. But yeah. I like to do everything kind of internally to see like with the ads, if you can convert on ads, you can convert organically. Yeah. Like once you can get good ROAS or even if you get crappy ROAS, but you get like some sales on keywords and you can target like specific keywords in, you know, uh, like I set up like individual campaigns and I'm like, all right, we're going to target like this one keyword. We're going to see like how it does. And then we can go. So that that's Amazon. Um, yeah, I'm not really like, that's even me. Like my distribution channel is like, get good on Amazon, go to brick and mortar. Like yeah. I don't, I'm not a Shopify expert yet, so I can't give you <laughs> a huge thing on that. Uh, one thing that, I mean, I believe that if you're doing Shopify, you better have some social proof. Like I think that you should do, you should get like user testimonials. You should have videos of people using the product. I think that you should try to get reviews on like Trustpilot and like other websites and stuff like that. I think that you should uh, spend a lot of time building up your social media accounts before you start running a ton of ads, like I think you should put that foundational stuff in place before mm-hmm. you, before you go to launch everything. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What's your strategy? Uh, yeah. I mean, between on the Amazon side, it's, it's essentially the same, you know, I mean, there's really not too much you can do now. There's not too many like backdoor ways of, of getting stuff moving. So it is really kind of just, 
you know, if you do already have a list, like doing some kind of large announcement, if you do have the ability to like, I really like to leverage influencers for product launches. Yes. Because you can kind of do like uh, get a bunch of influencers that are game to like start posting about it. But I have them all wait until like the week that we launch it. And yep. so everyone posts and everyone sees it in a bunch of different accounts. And then it starts kind of going a little bit quicker. Um, off Amazon, it completely depends on what the product line is. Like, I agree that you got to have your social side to it. But sometimes, depending on the product line, like social doesn't really matter. Like sometimes you'll get these guys, like I know they're huge on Amazon. I don't work with them on off Amazon, but it, like to, as an example, it'd be like those guys that sell printer ink, right? Like yep. printer ink replacement guys. There's a ton of those. If they did their own thing on Shopify, no one's doing their due diligence and looking at what those printer ink guys are posting on social. So that's going to be more of a SEO side. But yeah. Now you got to focus on blogs or, or you know, or you're going to do Google and you want to do like real specific search or shopping campaigns. But if you're doing, um, you know, consumables, then you got to think about like, okay, how do like your peanuts as an example, like how do I get someone to try these before I actually get them to commit to purchase? Because if it, with shipping and everything, like getting someone to try a food or a drink or anything like that first is always going to be key because they're not going to spend 30, 40 bucks on something they've never had before. Right. Um, you know, it, it really comes down to the product line and where that customer we think is typically hanging out and where they're at in the buying cycle. Yeah. So it kind of like, like, you know, like I said, like it all really depends for the most part. Yeah, no, I think uh, each product has its own unique strategy and I love influencers. Uh, they are amazing. I think to me, like I agree with everything you said. The main thing is start with like as much of a deep data dive as you can yeah. is, is yeah. where I, I mean, that's I think one thing that I've really been enjoying lately too is, um, and I'm thinking about putting this into, into mass view is, uh, is PicFu actually as well. I don't know if you've ever used that, but like yeah, PicFu is awesome. Yeah. We'll do stuff <laughs> like, one thing that I've started to do now is like, even when we're like creating a product, we'll, um, we'll take like the top Amazon products and we'll like put ours next to it. And then we'll be like, Hey, which one would you rather buy? And then, and why and everything. And so I like to do, I just like to do as much market analysis and research as I can yeah. before I, um, you know, spend a bunch of money on ads, spend a bunch of money on creative and everything yeah. else. That's another thing. That's another thing. I think a lot of people really don't. We they undervalue working with like e-commerce people. They undervalue their creative so oh, much. Like so much. <laughs> it's impressive how much work people will put into like their product imagery or something like that on Amazon or like yeah. their storefronts or enhanced brand content. Like it's all you know. They'll sometimes I'll actually see them like put some good work into it, yeah. and then they'll do like a Shopify site or they'll start some social media. And I'm like, what are you posting? What is this? Yeah. You're so your yeah. site looks like crap. Your posts are garbage. Like, but your Amazon's great. Like, why don't we use some of this stuff? So I completely agree. The uh, just the lack of of love for for good yes. creative is. I think even on Amazon, it's bad, man. Like I work with people all the time, and they're like, I'm like, hey, you need to do a thousand dollar photo shoot. And they're like, thousand dollars. And I'm like, yeah, like minimum. Yeah. Like, like you got to spend some money on this. Like, yeah. You, know, you like, have uh, what's the, I, I get ads for this company all the time. And it's something where now I want to try them, but I think it's Suna. I haven't I seen them. It, look at it. I think it's S-O-O-N-A where you just ship them your product and they'll do the whole photo shoot for you. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of companies out there that do it. But yeah. they seem to have like the option where you can get a model and you don't need a model That's and it's cool. lifestyle and it's knife yeah. and it's not lifestyle and it's not the most expensive thing in the world. So a lot of our sellers now, if they got crap pictures, I'm just like, hey, go check them out or check someone out. Their ads have been doing great. They've just been following me everywhere I go. So I had to give them a try eventually. <laughs> I got to check them out. Yeah, I'm always yeah. trying out new photography stuff and everything. Yeah. Like I've like we, sometimes we've had people that have worked with us and they're like, I'm just like, you're never like we did a case study on this. We did it with a product on white. We took a product that had um, so they're like product on white photography. They just do like white background. They're great if you just need a white background photo, but yeah. they're not like they're not going to give you that like you know super awesome look mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but we did a case study with them, and we took a product that was like it was getting single digit conversion rate. I can't remember what it was, and all we did was like update the photography. We did like some lifestyle composites where we just photoshopped, you know, just some good Photoshop and everything. 
the conversion rate went to like 29%. It was like single digit to like 29%. And I was like, why are we not all spending money? Like <laughs> really, really, really a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money, you know, working on our creative, like all the time. Like, it's just, I, I don't know. I think we just undervalue it because like everybody has a phone with a camera on it and we all have, we can all buy a nice, you know, digital camera if we want. And, you know, everyone can open up Photoshop or whatever. And so we think that like, there's so many people that can do creative and you can hire like freelancers and everything else to do it. But there's a difference between like, like being like being able to do it and being like a true artist. I mean, look at like yeah. companies like Apple and like the way they're, photography yeah, looks and stuff exactly. like that like it's like let's try to be like that and i say that right now and i'm thinking like man i better go back and like fix some of my photography and some of my yeah. stuff because like see, we we started to play a lot more with like 3d renderings and stuff because of like the cool. ability of you know because uh you know imagery is obviously great if if you have a sometimes you know if we have like a larger like industrial product like getting po- fi- uh, pictures of that like sending it off to a yeah. photographer is not cheap so we'll do more like get the CAD files and do renderings, but then you can also do like videos so that your, your video that you have on Amazon or a video that you're using in social and stuff can look a lot better. But I completely agree that like creative is wildly important and way too many people are just like, mm, this will work. And then they throw it up like it, like you would do on eBay. Yep. That's right. Yeah. And that, I think Amazon <laughs> sellers are actually the most guilty of that. They're like, all right, like I got my product, like, psh- yeah, Pictures, gave my money. Yeah, gave my money. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I don't want to take up too much of your time. That was great. It was an awesome time having you. I uh, yeah. really appreciate you being on the show. This is that that stereotypical time at the end of the show now where I give you that opportunity to tell everyone where they can find more information about you. Yeah, I would say... Uh, I mean, we have like a very tiny YouTube channel where I talk about amazon stuff. It's just a search mastery on YouTube. That's probably like the social media place that I'm trying to do things on. Um, and then, yeah, there's mastery.com as well. If you want to see kind of what we're doing, uh, as far as that goes, um, we are uh, opening up to every type of product and service imaginable. So, uh, we can't do this for Amazon where we can guarantee you reviews, but if you want to launch your Shopify store and you want reviews on Trustpilot or you want videos of people trying your product or you want people posting on social about it or whatever, like we are opening up our hundreds of thousands of Amazon shoppers right now to basically work on anything. You want to launch on Walmart and you want a hundred reviews, we got you. Um, so anyway, that's kind of, uh, what we're doing, really focusing on user generated content and helping businesses get that social proof. And yeah, come come check out that. And, uh, if you want, I'll even do this. I'm probably going to change this. I'm going to probably eventually turn this email over to one of my assistants, but you can email me at paul at massview.com. So if you want to, uh, that's my personal (laughs) email. I check that. So um, that might change if I get uh, a ton of spam on there or whatever, <laughs> but I'll throw it out there for now. So yeah, nice, Paul. Really appreciate you having on the show. Thank you so much, appreciate everyone it. who tuned in. Of course, thank you for listening. Make sure you guys subscribe on whatever podcast platform you want to, or on our YouTube channel, or head over to ecomshow.com to see wherever else you want to subscribe. Uh, but for usual, thanks for tuning in and keep on selling. We'll see you out there next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full service digital marketing company specifically for e commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of the Ecom Show.